there's also a college basketball update today because you know got asked about that too so let's do it um algorithm very very easy to read um I'm going to start saying the same thing every day. Teams above 20% margin that don't have significant injuries are supposed to win. There's apparently exactly 15 of them today. That happens to be these guys. Anybody have any injuries? Wisconsin's got probably one guy out, 2% out. Seton Hall has 2% out. The lines, of course, are, are not going to be good, but I've seen worse lines. You know, Stetson, only minus 170. Uh, 240 for Wisconsin over Michigan, away. That's probably why. Colgate over BU, minus 285. I've seen worse lines. Look at this, minus 198, James Madison against Arkansas State. You've got injured Texas State where App State uh, is healthy although they have a worse strength of schedule. Point is, is they, there are 15 games on here, and there are not any reasons not to play these teams. So that's that's a pretty healthy uh, list. Then you've got a healthier Texas A&M against an unhealthy Missouri. Missouri. Louisiana Tech over Western Kentucky, also a little bit healthier, although they're not at 100%. So a lot of a lot of interesting games. It looks like a pretty good board today. So I wanted to run those 15 teams because the only thing that I can recommend you to do watching the algorithm every day is exactly what I keep saying every day that I do a video, which is teams above 20% are going to win 90% of the time. That means it is expecting somewhere between 13 and 2 and 15 and 0 is what it could do today. Uh, probably 13 to two is about the worst that it'll go, but it might go, might go haywire. We've had days where we lose one of the days out of the last four or five, we did only go two and four in the top six. So it can happen, but it generally doesn't happen. You generally win 90% of the games. So that means that what does this pay? Let's pretend we win all 15 games. Positive thinking, but it might happen. I wouldn't be extremely surprised. We hit 14 in a row yesterday. Uh, if you look at yesterday's, it was 14 in a row. Two teams won it. So that's fine. So it could happen. I'll assume you win all of them and you just put a dollar on the parlay. 23 to 1, everybody, on these 15 games. But on average, we're not going to go 15 and 0. We're going to lose one. Stetson's going to blow it. I hate when I do this because sometimes I do pick the team. <laughs> Stetson's going to blow, although they have the best line out of all these, so maybe that's the reason why they would blow it. Now, you obviously, you lose money on a parlay if you do that, so you can't just do a parlay because you might lose one of these games. It's On average, you will lose one and maybe even two of these games. It's possible. If anything, it's possible. You lose all 15, it's possible, but it's more likely that you're going to go about 13-2 or 14-1. So if you lose one, well, how do you, how do you distribute? What do you do? So they may not let you take 15 games that's the other thing is the sports book you're using may not let you so what a better idea to do is to look at this and say all right well of those 15 games do we want to make any other restrictions like is it worth it to play gonzaga at minus 8000 it doesn't pay anything it's just taking up a slot on your list they're probably going to win obviously but it's the these don't pay anything i would say the cutoff is minus you know, better than minus 1,000 is what I think, uh, you know, if you, that's getting one to 10 on your money, right? You want to get at least more than 10% on a win. So we'll remove out there when the money line is greater than minus 1,000. We get rid of all the ones that are awful and worse than minus 1,000. That's going to reduce the number of games that we have over 20%. It brings it down to 10 and ironically enough, on um, Saturday, when I did hit all of my picks on the round robin, it was with 10 picks. So this would be to match last Saturday, would be all of these. And I already know I personally cannot wager on all of them because I can't wager on teams in Virginia where I am right now. That's going to be James Madison game. And I think that's the only other, it's the only game. So there would be basically nine. 
that I could play. Although I'd love, I'd love to play James Madison. They have a really good basketball team. They've pulled some upsets this year and they've played really, really well. You can see they're at the top of the list at only minus 198, I guess, because they're on the road. That's, that's unfortunately, I can't bet on them, but I would like to. So that leaves these games. But if we go back and we see what if you can play James Madison, it goes down to what, Bradley, not 10 picks. So here you are probably going to be given an option of round robin availability because it's only 10 for what's here. If you spread this out at 10 cents each, it's about a hundred dollar budget. $101 bet. If you hit all of them, you get 3.7 to one. So you're, you're getting close to getting four to one, but that's if you distribute them evenly, which there's so many big favorites on here that these really don't pay very much at all. You can see that um, if you just wager on the twos, the combination of the twos here, it only pays less than two to one if you if you hit all of them. So it doesn't pay to really play these ones way down here when you have teams with terrible odds. I would recommend, I mean, what I did last time was I did something like this, where I just bet the sevens. And you can see this pays six and a half to one now if you get every one of them. That That's better. And then sometimes you can put a little bit on the end because the true parlay, if you can hit all 10 of these teams, pays 17 to one. Uh, I, I don't recommend playing just the parlay because on average you're going to go nine and one. And so what, you know, what happens if you lose one and you just bet the parlay, you lose everything. But if you bet the sevens, they paid six, it paid 6.3, uh, 6.3 to one. Now it's still more than doubles your money, even when you go nine and one. So that's why I recommend focusing a little bit further down on the list so that you don't have to hit everything. But on a day where you you know you lose four, lose three games or something like that, you're you're not going to hardly get anything back. You're going to lose your entire wager, and that can absolutely happen. Yeah, here you get eight bucks back losing ninety if you go seven and three. So, you know, you hope for the best, but how you play these teams? These are the ones that um that seem like they're worth it uh, on the list, and you, you can expect to go nine and one. So, I, I keep making very declarative statements about what this algorithm will do. And they have been consistent winners every day, except for one day we lost uh, not yesterday, but the day before that. So it was Monday's games did not yield profitability above the 20% margin. Every other day did. And we went 23 and Two on a Saturday out of 25 games, we won the top uh, 10 games at least uh, on um, – even on the day it lost, I think uh, – like, so I can't remember. There, there's so many days that we've done, but the point is every other day has won because I've, I've recapped it in the video every day. I know that they've won, and they've been winning games, and they've been beating the algorithm. So this is where to focus today because it's just – consistent logic about the comparison of the lopsided matchup. There's a ton of other games I'm not even going to talk about because it's not worth me talking about, even though there's probably a lot of value here in some of these 37 games. I'm going to leave the discussion to, to you, the analysis to you. If you want to purchase a copy and look through them, you can try to read into them. But understand that the algorithm is saying they are more toward the 50-50 toss-up type matchup then they are significantly directing you to play one team or the team of reference on the left here. These are much more closely anything can happen type games historically when I look at the wins loss. So I don't want to tell you to play them because maybe they'll win 60% of the time or 55% of the time, but they're not going to win 90% of the time, which is what we see at this stage in the season with teams above 90% above 20% margin, end up winning 90% of the time. So I'll keep saying it because it keeps happening and we'll see if we go nine and one or better on those teams today. Good luck. May all your picks be winning.